You're watching The Run on BEN, the Business and Employment News Network. We've talked about Lindsey Graham's record on domestic policy. He's even been a bit unpredictable on foreign affairs. Speaking as a Verizon customer, he said he was glad the NSA was collecting his phone records. He freshened up his anti-terrorist credentials at the Iowa Lincoln dinner last week, promising, quote, I'm not going to call a judge, I'm going to call a drone and kill you. But back in 2004, after videos of abuse at Abu Ghraib came to light, Graham took the lead criticizing Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld. Do you believe, he asked Rumsfeld after all this, that you're able to carry out your duties in a bipartisan manner? The secretary responded, quote, um, a couple times. Then he conceded, if I felt I could not be effective, I'd resign in a minute. It actually took more than two years, but the resignation came. What will America say to Lindsey Graham's foreign policy should he run for president? Um, Todd. Oh, uh, I, I think uh, Americans are tired of war. There are occasional rare exceptions where they see something so horrific, uh, like you know, ISIS beheadings, uh, that if there were a simple, brief way to solve the problem, they might want to go for it. Uh, but they don't have any interest in remaking the entire Arab world the way, obviously, a lot of the neoconservatives and many of the neoliberals uh, w would like to. Uh, and uh, Lindsey Graham doesn't seem to have encountered uh, any war that he's really against. It's interesting, you, you mentioned uh, that he was uh, horrified by Abu Ghraib, uh, as was John McCain, of course, uh, and you could just uh, chalk it up to John McCain having been uh, uh, tortured uh, and thus you know, having special uh, feelings on that topic. But I think both of them are sort of similar in that they're extremely hawkish and they don't want anything quite horrible enough to embarrass us to happen that undermines the rest of their hawkishness. You, you don't want to look like barbarians while you're conquering half the earth. Uh, so it's, you know, sort of uh, torture is a bad PR thing uh, from their point of view. He's but, taken some positions against Israeli war. Um, uh, but he, he still, see, well, he, he's said he sees the world falling apart and he seems to think that the, the opposite of that is U.S. military intervention. And yeah, I would contend our track record is not clearly beneficial enough to know that things stop falling apart when we intervene. Uh, in some cases, we, we encourage them to fall apart. I mean, we've been, you know, uh, funding... He calls for smart intervention, yeah. not just... Wouldn't we all you know, like to see that? Uh, intervention. Okay. Oh. Well, I think it's also interesting that, that Graham and, and McCain both are staunch defenders of um, Guantanamo. Right, so that they criticize Abu Ghraib, but you know, no, they're not willing to do the same for uh, Guantanamo. Well, please, Gitmo, where are my friends? Gitmo, and and, and uh, <laughs> uh, we know that torture has happened there as well. And um, I think too that in their well, torture trotting, and Guantanamo are two different issues. You can be for Guantanamo and having a place to put put terrorists where you don't try them as as in U.S. courts. And you try them in military courts. Well, That's we, the well, point. We, 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 but we also know that torture has been used extensively at Guantanamo. But don't um, conflate the issues. Well, they're not. They're the same. No, we, total we, conflation. It wouldn't be, if we didn't have a separate, this is a, this is a side issue, but if we didn't dump them somewhere where they could be tortured, if they were in American prisons, it wouldn't happen. So, so there, it's no conflation in my mind. But the other thing is that I think that McCain and Lindsey Graham, who run around the world, I mean, if, if it were... If it were Democrats doing it to a Republican president, they would be called, it would be called treasonous. That they go into foreign countries, they criticize Obama, they criticize the administration, they, they act like independent agents, they are They are independent not, agents, freedom of well, speech. Yeah, in another country, if it was a Democrat, it's always okay if you're a Republican. Well, let's you know? talk about freedom of speech, though, because right after Benghazi, uh, Lindsey Graham said that Hillary Clinton was, quote, getting away with murder, but then a year later he looks at the House, the Republican-controlled House Intelligence Committee's report and says it's, quote, full of crap. I mean, isn't this somebody who at least has some sense of when to walk back and, and try to find a path uh, toward what actually happened rather than just giving in to the partisan bromides? No, I'd say so. I yes, I'd so. say so. I mean, Not he's taking a Who's more better? independent Who's position. Better? Who's better at it? Who in the Republican field is better on trying to find out what's really going on in foreign policy? Let me draw a contrast with... At this uh, point in time, no one. They have all, you know, drunk the Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think about his, uh, his work as one of the 13 floor managers in the House during the impeachment uh, of Bill Clinton, and he was the only Republican to vote no on any of the four articles of impeachment. And I think, uh, although it's for the Senate to actually decide whether or not to convict, 
he voiced the opinion that, you know, yes, voted to impeach on three, but voted not, I would have voted not to convict on any. This just really wasn't worth the, the trouble. Isn't that exactly the kind of uh, independent-mindedness that we're looking for in a, in a presidential candidate? It's old news. It's, it's you old know, news. What are it's, we looking for? What, what, what are the American character people based on looking for? You have to look at old news. No, not, I think when well, you're talking about the younger, you know, the, 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 the electorate, and, and they're in it for today. The American, you know, detention span is 30 seconds. So they, they, this will, I don't think anybody's going to care what he did in the impeachment trials. If they do, we're in much worse shape than I thought we were and as a country. I don't know that the electorate is as conservative as the party and the primaries are moving them. So all of this changes when we get to the general. So who's mm -hmm. going to get out of this race in the primary where it's hard to distinguish one from another? Their field is so crowded. Aren't Americans in the general looking... Uh, looking at the debate over whether or not Russia was our number one strategic uh, threat, which was such a dismissive line of, of President Obama's, and then Senator Obama's in the, oh no, then, then President Obama's in, uh, in the debate against Mr., uh, Mitt Romney. Um, and uh, can't we look at Senator Graham as somebody who said when the tanks rolled into, uh, before they rolled into Crimea, when there was the incursion into Georgia, and say, this is a guy who saw this early. Yeah, he's yeah. looking at Russia as something. He said that he wants to tighten the democratic noose around Russia. Now, he's a little bit prone to hyperbole, and it's, you know, I don't know if that helps him, but he's very tough on Russia. He's very tough on China. He voted no on the 2000 bill to let China in as a permanent trade, rep trade mm -hmm. partner, right? Whereas some of the other uh, Democratic candidates have voted yes on that. And I think that's a key issue. But so on both China and Russia and on terrorists, he's very tough on foreign policy, and that's a good thing. But does America care about foreign policy? Yes, they do. Actually, before the latest poll, which said it, the decision would be made on the economy, before that, it was the polls were saying that decision was going to be made on foreign policy. But so I think the two are relatively equal. It depends equal. on what's in the news. Ramadi has just fallen. Is it Ramadi in, in, in not Ramadi, that's in the in the West Bank. Um, the, was the town in Iraq just Ramadi, fallen to Ramadi. ISIS, You're, right? You're thinking of Ramallah, but it yeah, is Ramadi. It is Ramadi. Ramadi. Right. Um, so, you know, tomorrow it could be foreign policy again. That, it, is, it's, it's, it is the ridiculousness of our new news cycle, and I quote, you know, news. That's why that, I'm saying that, they're both know, the, relatively the, the 30s, important to the and voter. And the 30-second attention span of the American people. We have no idea what's going to happen I, before I give the, more credit to the American people. Well, I don't, so... Well, well never, never mind uh, what Americans think generally about foreign policy or where it ranks. Don't Americans want a president who looks and sounds and has a record where you can at least sleep at night and think... At least somebody who's you know is not asleep at the switch and has a clear vision of America's view in the world. Yeah, I mean Roll he's world. been on the Armed Services Committee in both the House and the Senate, and he was on the International Relations uh, Committee in the House. He also so he's got a ton of experience on on the foreign policy level. And and on the bipartisan, the limits of bipartisanship, uh, he did. Uh, opposed Chuck uh, Hagel's nomination by President Obama, which was itself an act of bipartisanship. He just didn't think that Chuck Hagel was the right guy for the job, and then Hagel did eventually resign. I don't think it was because he didn't really think he was the right guy for the job. I think it, he played ball with the rest of the Republicans in the Senate, which was they weren't going to give Obama anything. And we know that's a fact. That, that they, you know, We know it. They said it, and, and he was on the team that said, we will give Obama nothing. So who knows what anybody really thought about Chuck Hagel. Um, you know, it's only now that the Republicans are back in control of both houses, the House and the Senate, that, that they now want to govern and now they want to get things done. But for six years, they gave Obama nothing. Okay, that's Lindsey Graham. When we come back to the run, we'll look at John Kasich and his record in the House and as governor of Ohio. Stick with the run. Mm -hmm.